Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And I'll tell you what, I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to get right into the issue that we're going to be talking today. And first off, I want to thank very much uh, uh, the YouTube folks. I mean, by the way, they did me an excellent job. They're constantly giving us the kind of, of back, some information, if you will, on, on issues that we are very concerned with. And, and boy, by, by, by them providing me with the, with the kinds of folks that, it, that we've been having of late, I mean, it's, I'm just astounded. So I'm, I'm really excited about the fact that uh, Debbie's here. She's over here in the background. She wants to be here, but you want to be here, Debbie? <laughs> she said no, but it's it's community television, right? It's community television, and I, it says very important that we keep it in a very layman standpoint. We educate you, give you an opportunity to see what's going on, and bring you subject matters that in most cases are tend to like to be like taboo, or, or if not that, you see them in the media and TV or radio and whatever. But you really don't get the essence of it all. And so, hey, look, this this will be a very interesting program. In fact, before before we started. Uh, I had to, we, we had the opportunity to meet with my guest that we're going to have on today. And we spent about 35 or 40 minutes. And gee whiz, I'm still excited. <laughs> we might need about two or three hours, if you will. Maybe we'll just get him to come back. But, but you know, marijuana has been an issue that's been on the table for a number of years. Marijuana, alcohol has been a, an issue, whatever. We talked about intoxication. We talked about all kinds of things. But we just happen to have within our midst today, to me, an expert on all of these areas. If you notice, I'm going all over the page. But the fact of the matter is, is that I'm so really interested in this particular interview because of the, uh, the, the, the person that's here who's going to be talking about uh, this thing across the board. Give us a sort of a history of everything, for that matter. And especially Oregon. You know, I mean, for instance, uh, it's been said that, you know, Oregon was the, was the sort of the, the capital, if you will, of, of marijuana. You know, and, and I, I'd heard that, that situation. Or imagine being around marijuana, for that matter. The selling of marijuana. Uh, let's see. Um, well, anyway, I, I'm just I'm sort of getting look like I'm I'm getting a high myself or something. Just just thinking about it for that matter. <laughs> but anyway, let's why don't we just get right into our guest? Uh, first off, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give him, give, give him an opportunity to kind of give him, uh, talk a little bit about his background. His name is Josh Marquise. Marquise. Marquis. 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 In fact, I, when I thought maybe we, we, were ha we had some, some lineage or something, was that name? He said, Marquis, I, I spoke a little French, a little Creole with him a little bit, but then he brought the, he broke it down to me, and he'll, he'll break that down for us again. So, Josh, just come right on in. He's, he happens to be Clackamas County District Attorney's, uh, District Attorney's Office. He works out there. And, um, and boy, I tell you, and we noticed him on the, um, the ProPot Activist Rollout Campaign on the upcoming uh, ballot measures. You know, we've had a number of ballot measures here within, the, within our state, and I was very much involved in the medical marijuana thing back in the 90s when, the, when it first came out. We did several shows here, right here on it, and that was interesting. I, I, I learned something, but I, I didn't learn enough of it, and it's still going and whatever. So why don't we introduce Josh right quick. Josh, talk a little bit about yourself first, right off the bat. Okay, well, you're twisting my arm, Bruce. I will. I got you. Um, uh, my name is Josh Marquis. Um, I've been the district attorney in in Clatsop County, which is Astoria on the North Coast, uh, since 1994, when I was appointed by Governor Roberts. Before that, I'd spent about uh, 13 years as a deputy DA, first in Eugene, then in Newport, and then I was the chief deputy district attorney in Bend. In between there, I I was a defense lawyer for a couple years. Uh, I was also the speech writer to the Attorney General of California, um, and I was a newspaper reporter. Uh, I, you know, some people play golf. Um, I like to write op-eds. Um, and so, um, a as a prosecutor, um, substance abuse of all kinds, and that everything from alcohol to pills to marijuana to heroin to, you know, all of it is involved in about 75% of all crime. Hmm. And um, and you know if we were to you know try to rank it, I I would agree that alcohol is probably a worse drug than marijuana. But I think what we're talking about today is the history of marijuana right. in Oregon. Um, and in 1973, when I was barely old enough to drink, uh, I worked for a guy named Pat Horton, who was the district attorney in Eugene. He was a really tough guy, but he did something that was utterly radical in the United States at the time. Back then, the law was that possession of any amount of marijuana, uh, a joint, uh, you know, a, 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 not an ounce, but five grams of marijuana was a felony. And it was not unusual 
for college students or working people to be caught with a small amount of marijuana and find themselves probably not in prison, but with a felony record which followed them the rest of their life. And Pat's position, he was a very tough DA, was, look, we got to go after these drugs that are, that are killing people, heroin, methamphetamine, these other ones. But the casual and incidental user of small amounts of marijuana, we shouldn't be wasting our time on it. So in 1973, he led the idea that we should decriminalize, which is different than legalizing. So what we said was possession of uh, less than an ounce of marijuana is going to be like a speeding ticket. Hmm. That law has continued for 40 years now. It, uh, it, it's it's been 40 the years. No, oh, no. Just First, in just in Oregon, although a okay. number of states picked it up. But when okay. in, in 1973, it was a radical idea. And, but, it, but that was a different era. Back then, it was called, it, marijuana was sold by what we call a lid. And mm -hmm. if, you're, if your viewer is under 40, probably doesn't know what I'm talking about. A lid was an ounce. And a lid sold for about 15 to 20 bucks. And uh, the marijuana... Well, you said lid, the joint, you joint the lid. Now, what, what are we... What? Well, you, you might get about 20 joints in a lid. Uh, but, but the difference is that that, it's that that lid sold for $15, $20. That marijuana, the active ingredient in marijuana is something called THC, tetrahydrocannabinol. It's, it, it, it's, it's the buzz that it puts the yes, buzz in the marijuana. Okay, all right. And, and, and it, it is a weed. That's, there's, uh, there, it's, it's female hemp. Male hemp, which is grown all over the United States uh, and, and it has been used for hundreds of years in sailing ships, um, doesn't have has a tiny amount of THC in it. But female hemp, which flowers, is marijuana. Mm. So male hemp is generally not illegal, and female hemp is. So what's happened is like people have become good at gardening. So um, that ounce of marijuana that cost fifteen dollars in 1973 is no longer sold by the ounce, it's sold by the gram. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you might pay 20 or $25 a gram. There are 28 grams in an ounce. So we might be talking about four or $500 an ounce now, and the THC content, which used to be about 2%, mm -hmm. is now about 25%. And the difference, from a very realistic standpoint, is in 1973, when I was at the University of Oregon, um, kids would be smoking marijuana, and they'd have to smoke most of a joint before they could really get a buzz. These days, marijuana is actually usually smoked in a pipe. Um, and so all somebody has to take is one good drag and boom, they're gone. My point is, it ain't your father's marijuana. It's a lot more powerful. Now, that doesn't really change it, but it, I mean, we're, we're not talking, when we say an ounce of marijuana now, or as the supporters of legalization want to say, oh, people should have, you know, be able to have a pound or two pound. We're talking about thousands of dollars worth of product. Hmm. Okay, so as a prosecutor, now I'm an elected DA, and my I, I have six lawyers that work for me, and about uh, a total of 20 staff total. Um, I advise seven police agencies. Uh, marijuana, I, I, and I think I. I'm not speaking for all the DAs. I was president of the Oregon DAs Association back in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, I represent Oregon on the National DA Association. In fact, I just came from a meeting. And the laws are different all over the United States. Oregon, as you said in your opening, is much more liberal, much more progressive. We've been way, way ahead of, of a lot of other people. Now, what's interesting, though, is at the same time, Oregon voters, who are generally very liberal, and we haven't had a Republican statewide elected official right. in 30 years in this state. At the same time, they have, and we'll talk about this in a bit, repeatedly rejected almost every attempt to legalize marijuana with one major exception, which you talked about, which was in 1998, they permitted the uh, so-called medical marijuana. And uh, the, part of the problem is that on the, you, you have people on both both extremes you have you had the the bush administration saying there's no legitimate use for marijuana ever it's just as bad as as lsd and heroin that's frankly silly the fact of the matter is there are people that can benefit from it people with wasting syndrome associated with aids people with glaucoma with pressure that builds up behind the eye um, people who go through chemotherapy for cancer and can't eat, people who get wasting syndrome associated with a number of cancers. Marijuana, as anybody who smoked it, it, makes, it increases appetite. It reduces nausea. So eight years ago, I wrote an op-ed in The Oregonian saying, 
why is the federal government spent wasting so much time on marijuana and not spending time on a much worse drug, which they eventually did, methamphetamine, which was, is still destroying communities across Oregon. But now we're faced with the question of, okay, um, we, we, we have a number of very powerful people, three billionaires in particular, billionaires with a B. George Soros is worth about $20 billion. Uh, he's a hedge fund uh, guy, lives in New York. Um, and then John Sperling, who owns a um, progressive insurance company, and Peter Lewis, who uh, founded the University of Phoenix. Each of these men is worth over a billion dollars. All of them have contributed millions of dollars to legalizing marijuana. And for those states where marijuana, there's two states now where the states have legalized it, Colorado and, and, and Washington. Neither of them are in full effect yet. They each were very carefully drafted to have a one-year period before they went into effect. Is There's billions of dollars to be made, not just by dealers on the street, but by big pharma. Any and, idea as to why they're supporting these issues? These guys at that well, level. I think they, they believe, and I, you know, they can speak better for themselves that uh, uh, that uh, marijuana is is a relatively benign drug. It it's certainly not like heroin or methamphetamine. It's not oh, physically alcohol, addictive, yeah. or alcohol. Yeah, alcohol. I mean, if you were to give me as a law enforcement person the choice of dealing with somebody who is really drunk or really high on marijuana, I'll take the person high on marijuana any day. Hmm. Um, but these people believe that, that that at worst it's a medical issue, and that we should not put people in jail. That our jails are overfilling with uh, with drug offenders. That's simply not true in Oregon. I mean, Oregon has fourteen thousand people in prison. Seven percent of them are there for drug offenses. Almost all of those people are there for selling meth or heroin. I looked it up. Uh, when, when last year when ballot measure 80 was on the ballot, right. which would have legalized marijuana, which was defeated 54-47, even though our side, the side that was against it, we didn't have any money. I just drove my 12-year-old Crown Vic from town to town and, and appeared at, uh, at town halls and answered people's questions. Mm -hmm. So my point is that this is not a liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican issue. Mm -hmm. There are people, I mean, there are people that are very concerned that do we really want to be, uh, you know, the, you know, a, a state of stoners? Um, so stoners, wait, wait, break it down a little bit. Stoners, what are you talking about? People who are high on marijuana all the time. Um, I mean, as a drug, again, it's probably less. It's certainly less dangerous than alcohol. It's less dangerous than heroin. But, for example, medical marijuana was sold as an idea that there would be maybe one or two thousand people in the state that a doctor would write them a certificate that says this person, you know, Bruce's, you know, severe, you know, knee problems could benefit from it. Okay, we now have 55,000 card holders, Bruce. Many of them are, you know, snowboarders that are 19 years old and you could pick up Willamette Week and flip it on the backside and it's like a pill mill. It says, want a miracle marijuana card? Come in and we'll get you one in 10 minutes because there are doctors that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars looking at your MRI and going, hmm, I've got some bad knees, for example. If I wanted to, I'm, I'm sure that within less than six hours, I could go and here in card. Portland, get a marijuana, and if I get a card under Oregon law, I can possess at any given time a pound and a half of marijuana. Now, that's about $5,000 worth. Just to give you an idea how much that is, I could say stoned 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for about three months on that. Now, maybe there's some people that really need that, but I don't think there's 60,000. So one of the problems that has happened is Oregonians are a compassionate people. And I think they saw that there were people that actually could benefit right. from, from marijuana. Um, but what's happened is the system is being abused. And now, now that, that, that marijuana is becoming more accepted, and the Oregonian, as I'm sure you'll talk about, points out that a, a large percentage of the key age group, 18 to 35, something mm -hmm. like 39% of them have said they smoke marijuana within the last year and a smaller group within the last month. So they're, they're saying, okay, well, we have medical marijuana. Let's just make it available to everybody. And I'm going, wait a minute, hold on. I thought you told us that it was this powerful drug that would help people, mm -hmm. and now we're just saying, kick the door open. The law as it's written by the legislature would allow 
a mother who's not very responsible, and I deal with plenty of them, a single mom with a substance abuse problem, mm -hmm. let's assume it's, I don't know, pills, methamphetamine, heroin, whatever, and let's say she just wants more marijuana. All she has to do is sign a note that says, my 12-year-old daughter's doctor thinks that marijuana would help her. Huh. And she takes this note, and that's all she has to do is send it, bring a note to the health department, and, and guess what? Not only does she have her pound and a half of marijuana at any one time, her 12-year-old child should. Now, you know, there's a reason why we don't let 12-year-olds drink alcohol. Um, you know, they're, they're kids. They, their judgment isn't as good as it, it might be. We have a system in Oregon that is a joke. Um, there, is marijuana the devil drug? No, it's not. But what's interesting is that Oregon voters just one year ago said no to legalization. Three years ago, they said no to dispensaries. Uh, Twelve years ago, they said no to increasing the amount that people could have from one and a half pounds to six pounds. Um, and one can say, oh, well, you know, this is coming. Whether you like it or not, marijuana is coming to you. You know, I get a chance to travel around the United States, and um, if you looked at a map, it's true. There are places that are becoming very tolerant of marijuana. There are a lot of places where they're not tolerant of it at all, um, and a lot of America. The federal government, for example, still considers it a, a serious crime. Uh, the Obama administration has sort of gone halfway out and said, well, unless it involves other crimes or selling to kids or a number of other things, we're not going to get involved. But, uh, for example, what I believe is I think marijuana is a legitimate drug. Mm -hmm. Underline the word drug. And that a doctor should be able to write a prescription for mm -hmm. it. I trust doctors. We Doctors write prescriptions for very powerful drugs that can be addicting and, but can help people. Why not trust doctors? I, I, like I said, I wrote an op-ed nine years ago in the, in the Oregonian saying, let's reschedule. Uh, that's what the, it's, the federal law says. If it's a Schedule II drug, it has a, some medical use mm -hmm. and a doctor can do it. Under current law, a doctor cannot prescribe marijuana. If you're a doctor and you prescribe marijuana, you're going to lose your DEA license and you're probably not going to be able to practice medicine. So instead, we have this ridiculous system set up where the doctor writes like a permission slip. Bruce might be able to benefit from marijuana. Hmm. But by the way, 25% of all marijuana cards in Oregon are written by a, a group of doctors that I don't think is more than 40 or 50 doctors hmm. out of over 15 thousand doctors in Oregon. In other words, most doctors are going, you know, this is a drug and, you know, I don't know how my patient's taking it. Are they taking it with pills? Are they taking it with alcohol? Worse, are they driving under the influence of it? Hmm. I, in, in the debate about marijuana, I've heard people say, well, I, every time I'm quoted in the Oregonian, you can be guaranteed that in the comments section, somebody will say, oh, that Nazi DA from, from he wants to kill everybody smoking mm. marijuana. Mm. No, I don't. Mm. And um, marijuana is a low priority for all of law enforcement. We're much more worried about heroin and methamphetamine. But, you know, one point, let's go back a moment. One point you mentioned about the cost now, you know, how much this stuff costs, right? Yes. Uh, you've talked to a number of these folks. Where, where does the money come from? Well, that, that's a problem, too. I mean, um, you know, when you're talking about something that's $20, $15, $20, that's, um, I don't drink because my stomach can't take it, not because I'm morally superior, but that, that's about what a, you know, a good bottle of vodka costs. But when you're talking about hundreds of dollars, right. I mean, there are people that go out and buy marijuana because, um, you know, it makes them feel good. Um, for every drug we've got, we have people that use it responsibly. We have a lot of people that go out and buy beer and wine and hard liquor and have one or two drinks and don't drive. That's fine. But then for every substance we've got, we've got a group of people that misuse it. When I was um, advocating against Measure 80 about a year ago, two health um, educators came up to me from Western Oregon University in Salem and said, "When did you know that when people self-refer, in other words, they're not in trouble with the law. They're not there because somebody said, you have to go in and see a counselor. These are people who, maybe their wife or their boss, or maybe they just looked in the mirror and said, you know, my life is out of control. 
And they said, do you know what the top two substances are? And I would have guessed alcohol and pills or alcohol and cocaine. Mm -hmm. the, number one was alcohol. Number two was marijuana. Hmm. Um, so, so in the discussion about legalization, the idea that it's a totally benign, harmless you know, substance, I think one of the supporters of it, Paul Sanford, who I debated a lot, called it a relatively non-addicting drug. Hmm. And that's probably fair. I don't, you know, you don't see people, you know, jonesing for marijuana like they do for a lot of other drugs. But it, it is an increasingly powerful drug. And d we certainly don't want people driving on it. And I don't think we want eight or 10 year old kids, you know, drinking vodka or using meth or heroin. And even if their parents, you know, want them to, I'm not very comfortable mm -hmm. with a growing child with all that goes on with that, having marijuana, because make no mistake, if it's legalized, it's going to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like bikini baristas, except it's going to be, they're going to be selling marijuana. Well, let's go back to the to the initiatives again, going sure. back to initiatives. I guess it's going to be what will be on the 20, 2014 ballot measure, I guess. Huh? Well, that's interesting. What what is being talked about at the moment is a, what's called a referral f from the legislature to the voters. There's two ways that the voters can vote on things. The traditional way is you go out, you gather roughly 100,000 signatures, and you get something on the ballot, and the people say yay or nay. Well, they don't want to do that. Now, I don't know if it's, I suspect they could probably, have, they have, the, the pro marijuana people have a lot of money. A, there's a lot of people with money that support it. B, there's a lot of money in the marijuana business. So what they want the legislature to do is basically give it their stamp of approval. That's probably what's going to happen. I mean, I think the legislature wrote a really stupid dispensary law. In what way? Well, like I said, it, it, it allows a, 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 a parent, an irresponsible you know, parent, a man or a woman, to just sign a note saying, oh, my doctor has said my eight-year-old can have marijuana. I mean, I, I suppose there might be a, the rare case where an eight or nine year old child, maybe God forbid some kid with cancer might benefit from it. But when we make it that easy for anyone to get it, I think it's a problem. But let's just talk briefly what the history is. In 19, marijuana was basically legal in America until about 1935. Okay. And then a man named Henry Anslinger, who was the head of something called the Bureau of Narcotics, uh, had a pretty outrageous and really racist campaign that basically said if 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 particularly uh, African Americans get their hands on marijuana they're going to there's a there's a movie that's well widely available called Reefer Madness and it's crazy and embarrassing and racist like a lot of stuff from the 1930s and so a lot of it was frankly aimed at African Americans. Hmm. The people smoking marijuana in the 30s were often jazz musicians and artists, hmm. people like that. It it wasn't nearly as widely distributed. So and it was made illegal and under a tax law. They didn't actually make it illegal. They made it that you had to pay a very high tax on it. But then if you paid the tax, then you admitted that you had a drug and you could go to prison. And people did go to prison back in the mm -hmm. 30s. So, okay, fast forward to 1973. Oregon became the first state to decriminalize possession of less than an ounce. Then in the 1980s, there were attempts to legalize marijuana. Mm -hmm. In 1986, um, uh, there was a... Uh, an initiative measure five, 74 percent of Oregonians said no to that. Only 22 percent said yes. In, um, and then there were a number of others. The, the only marijuana initiative that has ever passed is the one you were talking about in 1998, which allowed medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. In 2010, there was measure, I want to get this right, 74, which would have allowed dispensaries, uh, but uh, voters were very skeptical about that. That was defeated. Uh, of course, there was an attempt, by the way, in 1997 to recriminalize it, which was not supported by many in law enforcement, including me, and it failed. And in other words, there was a, a move, if you want, to the right to go the other direction, and Oregon voters said, bad idea, we don't like that either. Generally, I think most Oregonians think, look, the way we got it now makes sense. We're not going to make it a high priority. If you have a half an ounce of marijuana, you shouldn't go to jail. You should have to pay maybe, you know, a $200 fine and be more discreet about it. You know, don't, you know, don't, 
don't light up a joint and blow it in a police officer's face. You're probably going to get in trouble if you do that. Mm -hmm. Just the same way as you would if you, you know, took a bottle of beer and, and you're 17 years old and went, glug, 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 glug. What do you do about it, cop? <laughs> He's going to probably arrest you. Um, and so, but now what we're seeing, again, are these pro-pot billionaires. And then what we do, it's not even being talked about as big pharma. Uh, who are seeing this as a huge way of making money because this is a drug that is enormous popularity in the population and if in fact sells for two to five hundred dollars an ounce hmm. um, think of how much money could be made if literally you could pick it up as easily eat more easily than you can get alcohol hmm. I mean alcohol is a huge problem in our society Marijuana is not as bad, but do we really just want to say, hey, let's add another intoxicant. Let's all get stoned as well as high. But you know, in the, in the, when you talk about alcohol, even now to date, we're looking at expanding the alcohol here within this state. Well, the, the issue on yeah. alcohol is about who should be selling it. And we have, frankly, a bizarre system where the state of Oregon, right. uh, largely, frankly, because of the... Um, Protestant history of, you know, booze is bad. And I remember when growing up in Oregon that, you know, you, you couldn't go on weekends and, you know, they had brown paper bags yeah, they put yeah, it in. It was, yeah. you know, that's sort of overcome. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the alcohol business is huge. There's no doubt about it. But just because we have one substance that's being heavily abused, I don't think that's a great argument for, hey, let's have another one too. Mm -hmm. So what, what does this mean to Oregon with this initiative? What would you say this means to Oregon? Well, Oregon is often at the tip of the spear of a lot of sometimes good and sometimes bad ideas. The bottle bill, recycling, uh, physician-assisted suicide, uh, decriminalizing marijuana. Oregon was first in all of those things. We're not going to be first in legalizing marijuana because Colorado and uh, Washington have already done that. What it will mean is... Uh, marijuana growers in Oregon know how to make a really good product. And, and so we're not talking about $20 an ounce wheat. We're talking about $200, $400, $600 dollars an ounce wheat. So I th if this were to pass, I think you would find the, the availability of marijuana would clearly you know, expand explosively. And just as if you make alcohol more available, people you don't want to have get it, i.e. kids, are going to have greater access to it. Uh, also, with every, uh, I, I was named DYI Prosecutor of the Year back in 2003. Uh, drunk driving is a big problem in our, in our society. All kinds of prescription meds, uh, alcohol is, of course, the worst problem, but marijuana. I can test, or the police can test for Oxycontin, uh, alcohol, heroin, methamphetamine, you name it, we can tell whether or not when you took it and whether you're under your influence. Marijuana is totally different because THC bonds to the fat cells of the body. So if you were to be or I were to be arrested tonight by the Portland police for and we tested positive for marijuana and we went to trial, a scientist would be able to say, well, we can't tell when Bruce smoked it. He might have smoked it two hours ago. He might have smoked it two days ago. He might have smoked it two weeks ago. Now, I've had people in the in the Oregonian say, I drive better when I'm stoned. <laughs> you know, that is just plain stupid. That's like people who say, well, after I've had a couple drinks, you know, I'm more careful. Um, and, you know, when I, I drive around Oregon, particularly on Highway 30, which I'll drive home tonight, which is a dark and rainy and stormy night, and there's not a lot of room for air. We all, regardless of what, where we think about marijuana, want people to be driving with 100% of their marbles, not 80%, not 75%. And no matter how good people claim marijuana is, you clearly don't want, but we don't have any legitimate scientific way of, from a law enforcement standpoint, of being able to tell whether somebody is actually under the influence of it. Okay. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, uh, maybe you can maybe talk a little bit about, we got bordering states here that have, have basically signed off on this thing, both the state of Oregon and the state of Washington, right? And that Washington, Washington and Colorado, which and Colorado, is not, Colorado. not, not pretty, bordering, but close enough. But pretty close, well, as much as we use, you know. <laughs> and maybe you can just talk a little bit, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. In terms of how do you compare their notes today? 
Yes. Okay, fine. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back to the joint. <laughs> Wait a minute. And then that's it, right? Jackson? Well, that could be two things. You could be in prison or you could be smoking some, some weed. <laughs> Welcome back to the Oregon Voters Digest, <laughs> brought to you by you Jews. <laughs> anyway, folks, we're, we're talking about a subject matter that's been on the, been on the table for quite some time, and uh, we're, we're fortunate to have with us today uh, Josh Marquise, who's a, he's a district attorney. In Clackamas County and Boyd County. Clackamas County. Boy, John, John Foote is the DA in Clackamas County. John, that's right. He was here. The, well, the, I, I get a little short sometimes, but but you got both of you guys are exciting. You know that, don't you? Well, John's a an excellent prosecutor. Good person. Good person. Smarter guy than me. No, 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 by no means. I don't know now. I'm going to get you guys together now for a change. But anyway, we're talking about marijuana, its impact. We're talking about the history. We've talked about a number of things. If you missed the first half, you may want to catch us on the next week or something that matter, and uh, maybe on YouTube. They'll put it on the, on, on the deal for us. But now um, we've talked a little bit. We've talked about that part. We've talked about um, uh, history of marijuana a little bit. We've talked about uh, the initiatives that were in introduced to date. We've talked about initiatives on, well, the present ballot, on 2014 ballot. What does it mean to Oregon? And now we'd like to see if we can get Josh to talk a little bit about uh, Colorado, state of Colorado. They've had their, they've, they've had their approval and also the state of Washington. And have you, look, have you looked at that? Well, I just came back from a meeting with prosecutors from Colorado and Washington. Okay. And it was interesting. The, the prosecutors in Washington really, really didn't like it. But they didn't. They didn't. And the prosecutors in Colorado were pretty much okay with it. It was a, it was a very interesting split. A lot of it, uh, part, I, I don't, well, the one prosecutor I was talking to was from Boulder, which is where the University of Colorado is. It's a much more liberal community. But it's also important to understand that both states did not just flip a switch and say, come get your weed. Um, Washington has delayed the implementation so that you still can't just go buy marijuana. They, they have been trying to be thoughtful and put together a way of, well, how is it going to be distributed? And what if you have a criminal record? Should you be able to sell marijuana? And you know, what about, how do you keep it out of the hands of kids? So in Washington, which is the state closest to us, my county, I look out my window at Washington. It's across the Megler Bridge and across the Columbia River. So when, probably within a few months, certainly by 2014, when marijuana starts becoming even more available uh, in, in Washington, uh, it's just going to be a drive across the bridge. But let's be honest, marijuana is pretty much widely available in yeah. Oregon right now. There are, in my county alone, there are three dispensaries. They're all illegal, but are, they're obviously not the least bit afraid of me or the feds that, you know, they got neon signs in the, in the window saying, you so know. So what's we, the definition of illegal? Maybe it's, it's against the law. There is no law currently that says you can just put up a sign and say, I'm going to sell you marijuana. Um, the question is, like it is in many cases, is what are law enforcement priorities? 
We have a drug team with only two or three officers in my county, and I can tell you what we concentrate on. We concentrate on heroin and, um, and, and methamphetamine because they're much more dangerous. Um, I, I, I talked to you before we went on the air. Mm. A typical case for me was one where we had a man who had a criminal record for, for uh, possessing and dealing dope, um, but just mar marijuana. Well, he wasn't a like career criminal. And he had a permit to be what's called a caregiver. There are over 20,000 of these in Oregon. That means that you can grow marijuana and provide it to somebody else. And then we've got about 60,000 people who can, uh, can have this pound and a half. So he had way too many plants, and he was growing them right in front of the local school in this rural community. And parents were complaining like crazy to the cops, saying, we don't like the fact that our kids are walking by, you know, 40, 50 marijuana plants. So not once, but twice, I sent sheriff's deputies to knock real politely on this guy's door and say, sir, would you please just obey the law and cut the number of plants down to the ones you're allowing and put them behind the fence or somewhere so that the kids can't just, you know, rip you off or, or, or be right there. He refused to do it. So the third time, we indicted him. Did he go to prison? No, absolutely not. In Oregon, it's virtually impossible to go to prison for even selling marijuana. Now, you, the, the, anti, the pro marijuana people say it's a class A felony to sell marijuana. That's true. But, but Bruce, that's a meaningless claim because uh, sentencing guidelines, the maximum a judge can, the maximum a judge can give somebody for their third conviction of selling large amounts of marijuana is 60 days in jail. So who's using it? Who's you? Who's you? Uh, is it low end of the spectrum? Oh, every. I mean, I, it, I, uh, I, I, I would. Salon, folks, I would you know, agree. Middle class. I mean, you know. I think every. I think all kinds of people use marijuana. All kinds of people. Yeah. Absolutely, and clearly, uh, younger people use marijuana at a greater rate. Although, because of Oregon and because of the, I mean, I'm 61 years old. Um, I went to the University of Oregon in the 1970s. There are some people, not close friends of mine, that are still in the same purple haze they were in 1974. Huh? They basically have never, you know, figuratively speaking, gotten up off the couch. And from and just the, the marijuana they're smoking now is just a hell of a lot more powerful than it was in 74. Now, you know, are they hurting anybody? Not probably not. Do they have themselves. jobs? I mean, are they working? No, or? a lot of them are on... SSI and they're getting a, uh, uh, they don't call them food stamps, an Oregon trail card and uh, they have a disability and they got fibromyalgia and they got, you know, un unspecified pain that needs, you know, this, that and the other. So now that's not everybody, but I don't, I don't want to become an entitlement society. Mm -hmm. I think, I think all of us want to be compassionate towards people that, that really need help. But on the other hand, we want people to pull their weight and generally when you're 25 to 35 years old those should be the most productive years of your life in many ways well you when, when you think about that same part you think about the fact that matter is in oregon for instance our education system is really having some tough times and a great deal of failure rates here in this in this area it is but it's not for lack of putting billions of dollars into it i mean one of the things you know it's you know it's, it's for the children it's for the children um I was very lucky. My father was a college professor at the U of O. I went to grade schools in Eugene that were excellent. Mm -hmm. um, the school I went to isn't even a school anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, it got taken over by something else. Um, you know, the question is, you know, what you will hear from the pro marijuana people is, let's quit put, let's quit spending money on prisons. Let's quit wasting our resources by locking up all these people for drugs that are harmless people and let's put it in education. Well, that's what I call, you know, guns or butter. You know what? You need guns and butter. Um, you, you need a society that's safe. Again, possessing less than an ounce is like a speeding ticket. Uh, whether I like it or not, Oregonians voted for medical marijuana and virtually anybody who wants to can get a medical marijuana card and have a pound of very potent weed available to them. And if, heaven forbid, they run down and they only have 10 or 12 ounces, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can't imagine what kind of emergency that well, would be. What about be. the kids? What about the kids? Well, that is a problem. And we, yeah, I mean, in our, in our school system, I mean, that's... One of the things we see, and again, alcohol's worse, heroin's worse, right. but, you know... The, there are a lot of parents 
this is a wildly controversial statement, but I'm known for making them. I think people ought to have licenses to have to have children because I see far too many cases where we go into homes where kids are not being fed, they're not being supported in their education. Why? Because their parents are completely ripped out of their mind all the time on alcohol, on, on, on hard drugs, and on marijuana. The problem is there really is no stigma attached to marijuana, none. In fact, it's probably a negative stigma. It's cool. So, you know, for example, the the parent that, you know, says, hey, smoke some weed if you want to. and Or there's a big party, high school party, and the, and the parent that says, hey, I don't care if there's weed here. At least they're not, you know, you know using needles or something. Um, that may be true, but they're not helping anybody. I mean, I think that child's going to be at a huge disadvantage. Does, now, I'm not saying that every kid that smokes a joint is going to, you know, turn into a, you know, a high school dropout. Um, there are many, you know, brilliant, successful people who smoke marijuana, and it helps them. But it is a drug. It can be abused, and we already. You, I mean, the way you started this off is how has Colorado or Washington affected us? Right. Not very much, because a, we've pretty much de facto legalized it already. And also, let's make no mistake about it, the pro-marijuana people have targeted those states because they know that a combination of libertarianism and uh, progressive, you know, that these are states that would vote for it. Hmm. Um, they don't go to Idaho and they don't go to uh, Pennsylvania and they don't go to Florida and try to get these things passed because they'd fail. So we're a targeted state. Of course, and and but what's interesting is that even though there is clearly a lot of tolerance for marijuana, the two most recent marijuana initiatives in 2010 and 2012, with no organized opposition, I wouldn't call them what I did and other people organized. Like I said, the sheriffs and the DAs and the chiefs got together and said, this is a lousy idea, let's go talk about it. So if it was that easy to convince 56% of Oregonians then I don't think that necessarily, although clearly if what happens in 2014, Bruce, is that these billionaires spend millions of dollars mm -hmm. having Morgan Freeman look into the camera, like, you know, the, the person we'd all like to be president, you know, whether he's on in the movies or and say, you know, we're wasting our law enforcement resources by, by locking people up for marijuana. Well, we're not doing that, but never mind. Um, it's going to pass. People are going to go, wow, you know, that makes sense to me. I, I don't want to waste my... I would like, you know, the cops out arresting people for beating women up and for other things. So the problem is you can say something in a political ad that's 90% false. Right, right, right. But like you said, again, on that same line, is that I'm sure the Oregon is not going to say no to the ad. Of course, not going to say it. It's mostly going to be on television. And, interestingly, and they're not going to say no to the ad. No, but the Oregonian has done an interesting about, I'd say, a 160. When I talk to the editorial board in... March of, uh, of a, a year ago, March, they were pretty adamantly opposed to Measure 80. Now the editorial board says, well, you know, let's, let's talk about putting together a sensible and workable marijuana law. For example, let me give you one of the, one of the problems, Bruce, is <laughs> they want to say, okay, we're going to have inspectors. Well, what are these inspectors going to do? Are they going to go out and make sure that the guy selling the marijuana is not a convicted heroin dealer? Nope. They're going to make sure that it's good weed, and they're going to make sure that there's not uh, mites and pesticides and mold, right, right. which I understand, yeah. but that's different. And, and they have built an iron curtain to, in all these laws to keep law enforcement out. Now, they don't, they don't want the police to be able to go anywhere near any of these marijuana places. They want to protect them more than places that sell alcohol. And who's doing them. this? You said the, the newspaper? Well, the John Sayo, who say, I may be mispronouncing well, no, no, that's, that's the money part, but still, I mean, the fact of the matter is that they're, they're able to put this kind of stuff in the media and the TV, the whole nine yards. Sure, well, the, what they what say is, those folks? well, what they say is they we're going to gonna have inspectors. The next question that most people don't ask is, well, what are these inspectors going to do? And what we're, we're going to have is we're going to have inspectors making sure that people get really good weed, not inspectors that make sure that we don't have criminals selling it, that we don't have. I mean, one of the, the Oregonian has reported stories about 
a, quote, medical dispensary, packaging up thousands of dollars worth of marijuana and sending it by FedEx to Texas where it's totally illegal. Why? Because they're making a, a lot of money off yeah. it. And they might get caught by the feds who, you know, on a good day might spend a little bit of time on it. So, Josh, it looks like it's a done deal. And, uh, well, I don't think it is a con- done deal. I mean, but I know, but I'm, I'm just, from what you're telling me, it's going to look like it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Look like it's coming. I think, I think there's a strong likelihood, if, particularly if these people who, who sincerely believe in it invest all this money in it. And, you know, will the sky fall? No. Will life as we know it come to an end in Oregon? No, yeah. it will not. Will most people become terrible addicts? No, they won't. But what I suspect will happen from spending almost 40 years in law enforcement yeah. is we will just be turning up the, you know, the, the intoxication uh, o-meter, you know, about 10, 20 percent, maybe more than that. We're going to be saying, we're going to be sending a message to kids and young people that, you know what, it, it, it's not only not a stigma, it, it's okay. It's no different than having a beer. Um, and I think that eventually you're going to see, just as there are with alcohol and tobacco, two legal drugs that are sold and taxed by the government, look at all of the cost that the taxpayers have to pay for just tobacco and alcohol. Now, the pro-pop people, I can hear them screaming right now saying, well, marijuana is not nearly as bad as alcohol and it's not nearly as carcinogenic as, 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 as uh, tobacco. That's true. But Bruce, tell me this. Can you think of any other drug that, is, that, that has a delivery system where the doctors tell you to smoke it? <laughs> no. Doctor could be smoking it himself. He could be. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> I guess, you know, I'm sort of reminded of, uh, again, another another issue that we're sort of bombarded with to date is the whole issue of gay marriage. That's less than 1% that's known, if you will. And it's, I mean, it's like a freight train. Well, I, mean, think, the, I think out people's out of, attitude closet, in Oregon have changed, they've changed dramatically quite a bit. on that. Well, right? the same thing with pop to a certain degree. I mean, you got a lot of closet folks, according to Jeff Mapes. You know, it's the Kogan thing. I think about the Kogan situation there. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, Mr. Kogan apparently didn't have the slightest embarrassment about using marijuana, using cocaine, cheating on his wife, lying to the voters about it. I mean, got, I, I don't think that's the kind of behavior we want out of elected yeah, officials. But he, but he got the cocaine, he got the cocaine, and possibly some of the drugs from his brother. That was that was yeah. cited right in the, in the article. Right. So I'm just thinking the kinds of folks who are basically saying, "Hey, so what? I want my coke, but I'm it's, I'm, well, you're I'm, I'm a closet user." Well, I don't so, I mean, think there's I that many. Like my, I still well, like my weed, you know. Well, I think you're right. I mean, there's so what no do we doubt do about this. Well, I, you know, we want people to drink responsibly, and I think at a minimum we can say, if marijuana is going to be used, and it clearly is, then let's have reasonable limits. To who the hell needs a pound and a half of weed, really? I mean, that's nuts. Do we really want eight and ten year old kids to have easy access to it? No. Do we really want people driving under the influence on it? No. Those three little issues that I've just brought up, none of them are being addressed by the pro-marijuana people. They believe that they're on a roll. And you're right. Oh, yeah. I, I think the gay marriage thing is different. I think that's people um, saw a lot of hateful behavior towards gay people, and they were, uh, even though some many of these people didn't even know gay people, they were offended by it. And I think you can look across the country and see that people, that there's been a massive sea change. I've seen it in my world with the attitudes towards drunk driving, domestic violence, and sex abuse. We're not all the way there on any of them. But you're, you and I are old enough. To, there was, used to be a comic named Foster Brooks who yeah. said now his whole shtick was how funny it was to, to be drunk and to be driving drunk. I was driving down the street and the tree, and the tree chased me. Ha ha. Well, most people don't think drunk driving is very funny anymore. Um, now, is marijuana, you know, this the killer weed from from reefer madness? Of course it isn't. But um, is it is it less dangerous than uh, than uh, than soda pop and chewing gum? No, it's not that either. Well, you know, again, thinking about well, this thing is going to probably be will be on the ballot. It'll Very likely. Well, ballot. I mean, frankly, yeah. if the What's legislature kind of had the guts, they'd just pass it themselves, right, but they right, don't. Right, right, right. That's <laughs> another issue. That's right there. But then you got, you've got, what, 50-some-odd-plus 50, 50 folks 
percent who voted against this thing the last right, time around. Right, 54 percent. So what do you say to them? Well, I say to them, same, just being keep forced. your vote the same and, and don't vote for it. But, um, you well, know, there's can't an, say anything. They can't say nothing now. I mean, the, the role is going such a fast. You well, can't say I, no to marijuana. If somebody, you know what I'm saying? Well, but why is it that with almost no money being spent right. by my side to say, slow down, okay. hold on, let's just let's let's just not rush into this. Why is it that, as you said, 54 percent before that, 60 percent of Oregonians, and we're not talking about 10 years ago. We're talking about one year ago. I think that this is why it's important to have these conversations, because a lot of the pro marijuana people want to make it sound as though as, hey, look, this is just it's going to happen everywhere anyway. Yeah. The federal government thinks it's a great idea. I mean, I would encourage anybody to talk to their own doctor and ask mm -hmm. their own doctor who's, you know, who may or may not smoke marijuana themselves. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? What do you think about this as a drug? How is it going to affect my child? Is it going to make me more uh, creative? Is it going to make? Is it going to? Or is it going to make me want to just lie down on the couch and uh, you know eat you know two more bags of Cheetos and uh, and spend my time doing nothing? Now, if that's the worst thing a drug did, that would make it pretty benign mm -hmm. compared to you know heroin, which is a, a curse in Portland and in Oregon. I mean, that's where we need and are spending our law enforcement, but. And, I, and I'm not saying people who start with marijuana do not inevitably go on to heroin, a very, very small percentage do. Mm -hmm. However, there are people who have a problem with substances, and when that drug doesn't get them high enough, they move on to another. And again, I urge you and I urge other Oregonians to talk to people they know who treat substance abuse and say, well, what do you think of Mm -hmm. I haven't found a single person in the substance abuse business who says, absolutely, let's just kick the door open and let marijuana in because it's so much less dangerous than these other drugs. You know, I, I like what you're saying, but at the same time, here I am here in this particular district, we got a congressman, his name is Earl Blumenauer. Right. He's already talking about opening up the stores and trying to figure out how can he get taxes off of marijuana. I mean, he, he's an elected yeah, well, official. Who, uh, yeah. He's an and elected he, official he is. promoting and he, this. Stuff. And he's somebody who probably will be in Congress for the rest of his life. He's in a very safe district. He's a popular congressman. You ask him whether or not he smoked and a joint. He, he says, oh, I've never done this before. I mean, have yeah. you ever been around? Oh, no, I've never. I, you know, I, I've only smoked I, it, but I've never inhaled it, maybe. You know what well, I'm saying? Like you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm this. When I, when I smell burnt marijuana, which doesn't happen very often anymore because I'm the district attorney and people are not lighting up in front of me, but it. I, I, it, re it reminds me of positively of my years at the University of Oregon, where I'd walk down the hallway of the dorm I lived in, and people would be smoking marijuana. It wasn't—it's not a bad association, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm sorry for a U.S. Congressman to say oh, I've never been around marijuana. I've never smoked it. Um, but he's pushing it. Oh, of course. Well, you know, there's there there again. There's a lot of money, and I just ask people to be as skeptical mm -hmm. about who. Why are all these people with so much money so anxious for marijuana? What if it was the Koch brothers or some other group of people that you're going, oh, yeah, I don't really want to have anything to do with them. I mean, they're going to try to sell us, you know, nuclear power or coal or, you know, uh, you know corn syrup or whatever it is that we're concerned about. Um, you know, you always, in my line of work, when, jur when a juror is asked to evaluate a witness, they say, we, we tell them, you should look at what the interest, bias, and motive oh, yeah. of the witnesses. Follow the money. That's right. <laughs> and it's, it's a fact. Because I can tell you, I am not going to make any more or less money, and, nor is my office, if this thing passes or fails. It, marijuana is not a revenue center for law enforcement in this state, and it hasn't been. Maybe it was 50 years ago, but, you know, I wasn't a lawyer 50 years ago, and, and Oregon prosecutors and police have been reasonable for the most part in how they uh, prioritize marijuana. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the question has to be asked, again, you know, in 98, people passed it and said, you know, for sick people, uh, be available. Is it a, a drug for sick people? Or again, is it a panacea? Is it is it SOMA? For those people who remember reading uh, Brave New World by Audless Huxley, and you know there was a, a pill called, there actually is a pill called Soma now, but everybody who just wanted to, to, to bliss out 
and took Soma. Is, is that a good society, a mm. blissed out society? Mm. I don't think so. That, does, that doesn't mean that people shouldn't have the opportunity to bliss out every once in a while. Mm. I just don't want them blissed out all the time. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, really, as far as your peers are concerned, I mean, have they signed off? I mean, I mean you're going to need more guys like you knocking on doors this time around. Well, you, I, for, you know, <laughs> I mean, district attorneys have different opinions. I've, I know a couple elected DAs who think uh, pretty much what, like what you've said, this is inevitable, it's going to happen anyway, might as well just try to make as good a law of that as possible. And I've talked to DAs who say, you know, over my dead body. Um, and, but I want to be clear, you know, again, it's not that we're making money off it. We aren't seizing people's houses and cars because they have three marijuana plants or even 30 marijuana plants. In the United, in the District of Oregon, the federal prosecutors who have much more power, you know what the standard is? It, it, for the feds even becoming involved in Oregon, mm. 1,000 plants. So if you just have a little old grow up with 800, which is a lot of marijuana, um, and we're talking tons of marijuana at this point, and, and millions of dollars, the federal government has decided that is just not worth their time and not energy. Not worth their time. And so maybe that's can, reasonable. So a person can have three different lots, you know, in three different areas, right? Well, a lot of marijuana is grown on public land yeah. <laughs> because that way nobody can say they own it because, I don't know, something like 60% of Oregon is owned by the Forest Service, the BLM, or, or state and local governments. Well, what do you say to the rest of the folks out here if you need some help? What do you tell them? Where do we, where do we go? Well, I just ask people to, to look okay. at both sides of the question. I mean, they're welcome to look at my website, which is simply okay. Coast DA, which is? Okay. C O A S T D A. I'm the DA on the coast, coastda.com. Okay. okay. I've written a few articles about marijuana. It's okay. not my big subject. Um, I find myself sort of drafted into this because, frankly, there are a lot of people who say, you know, I don't really want to talk about it because I'm going to get people mad yeah. at me. Yeah. I don't really care whether people get mad at me. Um, I would like people to think about it and not just rush to judgment okay. one way or the other on this. Josh, this has been great. This has been Well, thanks for having me, this, Bruce. This, I'm, I really appreciate the background. I'm sure the viewing audience really appreciate it also, too. And maybe we might be able to get someone else to come on over on the other side. I don't think you'll have any trouble yeah. whatsoever would finding you guys, people. Would you consider coming in with him? Oh, Same. sure. I am, I'm a glutton for abuse. All right. Josh, thanks very much. Thank bro. you, Bruce. I appreciate it very much. Folks, thank you very much. Take me next time around. We'll, we'll have another good subject matter, okay? In fact, we'll get Josh and somebody else here with us. Have a good one. So, yeah, Viagra costs $25 a pill. Think of what you can get with marijuana. That's the next show, Josh. Well, I, I might avoid that show. <laughs>